Since we have marriage, we have adultery. Historically condemned, universally practiced. <laughs> Let's talk about why people cheat. Uh, what are the causes of infidelity? Well, infidelity means breaking of trust. Our chemistry is very much involved in the process of developing trust from birth on. There's research now that shows that it happens before birth, which is interesting. So trust is the key word, breaking of trust. And so trust is broken in infidelity when you have someone that you are with and you're trusting that the relationship is in faith, still together, and that the bond of trust will not be broken. And so therefore, I think of order. I think of um, communication. And so we lost our way in how to organize our communication. We've lost our way in how to organize how we um, talk about what's happening inside of us and we have this fear sometimes it's a fear base because there's too many emotions that everything comes out of because you're not talking about what's really going on mm -hmm. and so intimacy is impacted because you broke the bond of trust by maybe being distracted in the relationship, maybe you're not feeling fulfilled in your relationship, maybe you've been together so long that you're just used to the same old, same old, yeah, and you're bored with the relationship. So, so let's get into that. Let's get into how the, the bonds of trust get broken. What are some of the other causes of what gets in the way of, of creating that, that, that distance between two people? But you see, you're asking why do people cheat? Uh -huh. That's not the same as asking what is the effect of their cheating on the relationship. Okay. I think that the emphasis, particularly in this country, has continuously been on the betrayal and the hurt. And I think that infidelity is a dual track story. It's growth and expansion on one side, hurt and betrayal on the other. At the heart of infidelity, often there is longing there is loss. Often people don't go to look elsewhere because they're looking for another partner, but they're looking for another self. They're looking to reconnect with the parts of themselves that they lost. Yearning and longing on the part of the unfaithful, breach of trust and betrayal on the part of the hurt people, and the storm of the infidelity is that you have two completely contradictory plots taking place at the same time. Since we have marriage, we have adultery. Historically condemned, universally practiced. <laughs> there has never been a civilization without infidelity because a part of it also has to do with curiosity, with our desire for new, for more, and all of that. And when we look at the symptom theory, people cheat because there is something missing in their relationship that presumes that there is a relationship that would be so good that it would kind of a fair prove it and it wouldn't happen. And many people who go elsewhere are in very content situations. There's something else that moves us to go and look elsewhere that sometimes has nothing to do with the partner. And, and you know, you're talking about that it's always been condemned. I think that's such an interesting piece of it because a lot of times when people talk about going through it, they talk about their community. They talk about somebody won't sit next to them at their children's play. They talk about a wife turning to her husband and interrupting a conversation and saying, you're not allowed to talk to him. And it's, you just never know what goes on between two people behind the closed doors of their marriage. And we as a society are almost impulsive in the rush to judgment on that. And I think that has to do with people's own fears of what's going on in them. Well, and, and in additionally, we don't necessarily hear about the couples who successfully worked through that. We hear about the couples who break up, but we don't hear, I mean, or we do hear Hillary Clinton being a prime one who, who was going to be beaten up no matter what choice she made. And, but she made a conscious choice. And, and so she saw her relationship as being more than this one thing. And that's really, infidelity is, 
it is more than just one thing. It, it's as Esther describes that you know maybe maybe you have been unloving to me. Maybe I have been missing something that I didn't know I was missing until somebody else came into my life. I wasn't looking for it. It goes back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs and the belonging needs and the needs of deprivation. I don't know I need this until somebody gives it to me. And then I'm attracted to it. I feel, I feel alive, I feel ex excited. And it doesn't mean I don't love my partner. It just means here's this other world I was never exposed to before. I, I love this. I think what I'm hearing is that instead of really focusing so much on, on the why does it happen, that what we've been talking what about, does what does it mean, yes. and how can we use that meaning to further the bond in the relationship? How can we use that meaning to continue to support the family, as you said, which I think is so great, instead of making the betrayal this single act that breaks everything?